Chapter 10. Love. I, love is the hidden power in brotherhood. And he who lacks love is blind, deaf, lame, and cannot do anything. Now, I want to ask you a question what hinders you from practicing the word of God? If you know that particular factor, mention it to me. We are in the Bible class and every person is free to express his own opinion. Tell me exactly what prevents you from worshipping God and abiding by his teachings. Is it death, poverty, wretchedness, children, wife, husband, persecution or any other thing that hinders you from practicing the word of God? If you know, tell me. Your situation is just like a situation in which you want a child to go outside and play and equip him with the necessary tools, but he cannot go outside because there is a masquerade that prevents his going. It seems to me that there is something you fear, if you want to practice the word of God, that thing is either going to kill you or make you poor, and as a result, you vow never to practice the word of God. Tell the world that brotherhood of the cross and star has not yet started in its true perspective. The duty to perform is found in the books of Revelation from chapter 1 to chapter 22. All other books in the scriptures talk about other things. From Genesis to Malachi, all the writings there testify about the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when our Lord Jesus Christ came, he bore witness to the coming of the Holy Spirit. Conclusively therefore, all the writings of the Old Testament bore witness about the revelation of John the Divine, and brotherhood is the revelation of John the Divine. Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 to 16. After this I beheld, and, lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Apart from the white suit on you put on, see how that passage is fulfilled here in brotherhood, because we serve God day and night in his temple. There is no time for one to say, let me go and relax in my house, because it was prophesied about you that you will not sleep in your house, irrespective of your positions in life, magistrate, judge, engineers, doctors of art, doctors of science and the rest of them. Wherever you go to, you cannot sleep in your house, you will continue to ask where the Bethel is, and when you find it, you go there to sleep, so that he will cover you with his wings. Reading from Genesis to Malachi, you will not see any reference made to the wearing of the white suit on, and you will not know where it is written that the children of God in white robes will remain day and night and serve God in his temple. But we have been serving God all round the clock without feeling hunger or thirst. We do not feel the hazards of either but continue to serve God. It therefore means that the Bible passage was written specifically about us. Glance through the whole Bible, and you will discover that Moses, John and our Lord Jesus Christ only had disciples, while the apostles were the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the church denominations at the present era, mention any of them that has disciples. But what happens, wherever you go? You are called the disciples of Obu. Have you seen what was written in the book of Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 to 5? And he should me appear river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. 
What is your opinion about that portion of the scriptures? If you examine the behavior of the different church denominations, you will observe that some of them beat drums, clap hands, burn incense and light candles. They take all types of drugs, consult native doctors and sorcerers, but what happens here? According to Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 to 5, it is said, the leaves of the tree by the banks of the river will be used in the healing of the nations. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15 reveals about fear, and God is going to take away that fear from us. Read Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and, behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. That is, our greatest enemy that makes man fear and tremble is going to be removed completely from the surface of the earth. That thing you dread most in the world is death, and if you insult him, he comes and snatches you away. If there is a report that somebody is dead, the people of that environment will become so sad, they will stand into discussing and expressing their sadness about what has happened, even though the deceased may be an infant. Immediately you weep and mourn or show that sign of sorrow, you give death the impetus to become proud and pompous. Among you here, who had ever dreamt of putting on this white suit on? Was it very pleasing to you, when you wore it at first? It wasn't. Who is able to tell me, how he came into brotherhood? Did you hear about brotherhood, before you came in? Were you directed by any person? Do you know, that, if you are not called by the Almighty God, you cannot put on the white suit on, and come to brotherhood? If that call is not extended to you, you can live where there are members of brotherhood calling that name, but you will not hear, because you are not called. If you are not called by God, you cannot wear this white garment or go barefooted. It will be difficult, for you to do most of the things we are doing in brotherhood, if you are not called. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 12 After this manner therefore pray me, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. That prayer is now fulfilled, that kingdom is now on earth. You have seen it and you are in it. This is the fulfillment of that prayer. That kingdom the disciples prayed for, is what you are enjoying and what we do here is exactly what is done by the angels. Before ever you come in here, the angels are already here, arranging everything in their proper order. They are mixing with you, doing all sorts of things, but you cannot see them with your carnal eyes. Sometimes you go on outing with a small number of persons, but after some time you see the multiplicity of people which you do not know where they come from, and you will never stop to ask where the people come from. We sit down here to listen to the word of God and at the same time fight and quarrel and do all sorts of things, and yet brotherhood spreads to all the continents of the world. You never ask yourself how the growth of brotherhood came about, and who has been solely responsible for expanding brotherhood all over the world. The Father is advancing brotherhood all over the world even into the abyss. Wherever we go, we are identified as brotherhood, even if we put on the darkest garments. Since you became a brotherhood, have you ever heard that a brotherhood is killed with knife, gun or any destructive weapon? No other church denomination in the world has ever lorded over a member of the brotherhood. If you go to live in a compound you will be discriminated against, others may even want to desert the compound, but after a while you become a ruler in that compound. Brethren, anywhere you go to you are despised. Some people who vowed not to come to brotherhood are surprisingly seen in a white suit on later. Who is responsible for all these things? All these occurrences are caused by the angels. You are not responsible and I am not responsible. But it had been written about you that at this particular time, all these things would happen. It is a belief of the people of the world that a man of God is always poor. For this reason, they have an adage which says, one is as poor as a church rep. The church denominations easily conclude that, since a godly man is always poor, his reward is in heaven. In this new kingdom, it is not so. 
All those who come are so wealthy and prosperous that people say is it because of this money that you come to brotherhood? How money comes into the hands of brotherhood members is best known to the Holy Father. You were predestined to enjoy this new kingdom of God. Many people have their trust in so many things in the world, in concoctions, charm, talisman, others look on necromancers, secret societies and others to principalities of the world. Of what use are these things to them? The government came and devised a means of getting rid of all sorts of criminals, and for this reason, they established law courts, prisons, and appointed judges and magistrates for the execution of the law. The government, in order to stamp out crimes, has sentenced people to death, and some to life imprisonment. But has that prevented people from committing crimes? There was an era in which the establishment of a church was the order of the day. If you moved to a small village with a population of about 50 people, you would find that there are about 5 churches. In spite of all these churches nobody has ever refrained from sin. The principal aim of all these churches was to come and get people reformed from their former ways of doing things, but are they capable of doing it? What about secret societies, can they set crimes aside? Of all these, mermaid, ghost, Beelzebub and other things, which is capable of doing anything. You cannot use an evil thing to set aside an evil thing. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 15 verses 12 to 15 Then came his disciples, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended, after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant, which my heavenly Father hath not planted, shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Talisman, concoctions, church denominations, secret societies, and others were not established by God. And for this reason, all these things must be eradicated. If you see a person wearing charm around his neck, and suppose that this thing is protecting him, it is a lie. All those who carry charms and concoctions for protection should realize that there is no power in such things. They are merely carrying heavy loads about. What has preoccupied your minds is the source of this power. You continue to ask from where does this power come? Is it found inside the ground or in the sea, in the rock, in the bush, sun, moon, star, rivers at Biapanor 26 Mbopa Road? From where do we have this power? If you begin to argue like this, it means you do not believe what our Lord Jesus Christ said. This same mind of investigating the source of power in brotherhood has blown confusion into the whole world because nobody believes that in brotherhood there is no other worldly power except the Holy Spirit that operates. Even the members do not believe that there is no outside force in brotherhood. Right now, as you are sitting down here, there are containers for your holy oil somewhere. In your houses, cars and offices there is a small bottle filled with holy oil, and once you suspect any appearance of evil, you always sprinkle it calling on the name of the Lambro Lambro of you to dispel the evil. Because of your action you have instilled fear into the hearts of many people who dread the holy oil more than Juju or Mermaid. Immediately they see you with a bottle of holy oil, they would run back. If people gather together and you sprinkle even the common water from the tap, each of them will run and shout saying, Don't pour that bells of water on me. Now the people of the world fear mermaid, concoction. But mermaid, concoctions and juju fear the holy water and oil. Do you know why your brother or husband says you should not continue in brotherhood? The reason is that he has certain charms for himself or may belong to one secret society or the other. But immediately you enter into his house, the Holy Spirit in you would render all the elementary spirits useless. Then, he will investigate the source of your power but cannot find it. Finally, he will give you the warning not to come to his house again or there will be trouble. If it were possible, he would chop off your head with a knife, but since you are indestructible, he cannot do you anything. It is because of the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit that has subdued the churches, government and every institution in the universe, that people are shouting on Jesus to kill Obu who has destroyed their diabolical power and has withdrawn all their members to himself. They mistake him to be that dragon who will come and deceive the world. Brethren, brotherhood has no comparison and it is beyond human comprehension. Therefore, no person has the power to do anything here. Your book knowledge is not required for the work of this new kingdom of God. 
It is the Holy Spirit alone that does everything in this kingdom, and so, all thanks, honor and glory must be attributed to him alone. It has been revealed to you that the holy angels of God are the ministering spirits in this new kingdom. You are not alone, wherever you go, the Holy Spirit of God is always guiding you. And it is for this reason that people of the world say you are not alone. Because of ignorance, they call this angels, which is engine too. Brethren, it has been written about you that at this last dispensation of things, the holy angels of God will minister unto you. And, that is why the worldly people say that you always move in a group. Even though you do not see these angels with your naked eyes, they attend to you, wherever you go to. Brethren, think of this situation, when you were in the world, initiated into various cults, you were not protected, even, when you wore talisman all over your bodies. Immediately you destroyed all your concoctions and talisman, and subjected yourself to the baptism in brotherhood of the cross and star, you became supreme and controlled all elementary spirits. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. Love is the key to heaven, key to wealth, power, good health, and everything in life. Once you have love, you are free, wherever you may go to. Love is the beginning and end of all wisdom. I will never teach you to have wisdom, wealth, to be tricky and cunning with people, or to possess any other ungodly virtues, than to practice love to one another. Whether you are educated or not, you have children or not, possess carnal wealth or not, what I want you to do is go and love one another and spread the gospel to other brethren to do likewise, because I know that love is the key to all successes. Many of you take this teaching on love very lightly, but I tell you that love is the way to all good things. He who lacks love is blind and dead. He is deaf and cannot have or know any good thing. He who lacks love is dumb, he is lame and lifeless. There is no other way which can help you apart from loving one another, as Christ had loved mankind. I do not teach you new things outside love. I do not teach you history or genealogy. The whole world is undertaking studies in different fields in order to acquire power, peace and life. The only key to power which you know and witness here in brotherhood, is the love of God. The whole world has come to the realization that the Holy Father is a perfect teacher and the omniscient God. Where else do I acquire this wisdom and power than in loving one another? In the whole universe, I am the only living soul, the rest are dead and cannot do anything. If one is in difficulty and calls on your name, he will not be saved, because you are dead. But when the holy name of the Father is pronounced, all powers have to subdue to him, because he is the highest authority. I am the only one who sees far and wide, because you are all dead and blind. I see things far and near equally. As we are here now, I see and hear all that the Father is doing, which none of you can experience, because you do not have the love of God in you. You mistakenly say that the leader does not travel from place to place, but I tell you that he travels faster than any one of you, and is present everywhere. It is only you who remain at one place. The reason why the Father has succeeded is his love. I have no business with things of this world, because they lead man to perdition. They cannot give you peace and life. But if you love one another, you are free from all difficulties. When have you ever seen the leader frown his face? fight or quarrel with people. In your own case, you are provoked at the least offense, and you revenge immediately. If you do this, where lies that love for one another? You have all seen, that, whenever you offend the Father, instead of saying anything hurtful, he embraces you, blesses you and fills you with all good things. Why do you have to beat your children? Do you not know, that you are beating Christ, and also crucifying him the second time on the cross? Why do you have to punish a thief who robs you of your property? Are the money and children not owned by God? Why do you have to fight and struggle for what belongs to God, if you have the love of God in you? Why do you have to arrest a thief? Does it mean that the Father does not see him, or does it mean you know better than God? It is said, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman whacketh but in vain. Psalms chapter 127 verse 1. In your case, you accept even to perish in order to acquire material wealth. You seek the devilish ways of protecting your lives. The simplest way, before you is clear and easy to pass through. Love one another. 
If you center your minds on nothing else but love, your eyes will be opened, and you will be able to see God and feel His presence, as the Father is doing always, because He abides in the love of God. Since you are all longing to see God, harden not your hearts, and let go the things of this world. What did our Lord Jesus Christ tell you? John chapter 15 verses 8 to 11. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you, continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even, as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. It does not require clapping of hands, drumming or any other thing, it is simply loving one another. This means, that you do not have to impute sins on people, you do not have to envy, backbite, tell lies, fornicate, indulge in adultery or do anything which can harm your neighbor. You only have to love them. Money has nothing to do with love. What then do you think is the instrument used in performing the work you see here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know, that we all have knowledge. Knowledge of the good charity and faith, and if any man thinks that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet, as he ought to know, but if any man loves God, the same is known of him. If you do not possess this love of God, how will he know you as his child? Why did God call Christ, his beloved son? The reason was that he loved God with all his might and spirit. In your own case, you want money, wife husband, wealth and all the material things in this world. What were the teachings of Christ based on? What is the new covenant that he made with man? John chapter 15 verses 12 to 17. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you, these things I command you, that ye love one another. What else did our Lord Jesus Christ preach than loving one another? Is that love now found in you? Do you not see love working in the leader? Is he not doing it practically to you daily at all times? Love is peace, power, patience, endurance, life, truth. It is all good virtues. It is the everlasting wealth from God. Where the love of God abounds, there is no discrimination in a society. The Father is love. That is why, when a woeful sinner comes before him, instead of rejecting him, he embraces, blesses and offers peace to him or her. The most important of all, is that he forgives all your sins. What do you think is the significance of blessing the sinners by the Father? Do you regard it as a foolish act or something not worth doing? Romans chapter 12 verses 17 to 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as leave in you, live peaceably with all men, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto a wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Who is right and who is wrong? According to the scriptures, read from that passage, is it I or you? You punish and torture people who offend you. Is it you who punishes, who does the right thing or the Father who blesses? You are all practicing the law of Moses which said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Exodus chapter 21 verse 24. This is vengeance. Some of you pretend to be good before the Father, but the moment you do not see the Father physically, you fight, abuse and quarrel with each other. Such actions do not give glory to God. If you fight against an evildoer, then I ask, is that the work of God? Matthew chapter 5 verses 39 to 48. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, 
turn to him the other also, and if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have the cloak also, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow a bee, turn not thou away, ye have heard, that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which desperately use you, and persecute you that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust, for, if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so, be ye therefore perfect, even, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. How do you understand that passage? My deeds and yours, which ones are agreeable with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ? Some of you say that God loves the leader more than you. The question is, whether you have the love of God in you. Have you complied with the instructions of God, mostly to love one another? If you have not been practicing the word of God, start right now to practice it, and you will be loved. The power existing here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the power of love. If somebody abuses the leader, I regard him as a fool. If you fight with the leader, you are a fool. Why do you not follow me? I who am on top of a palm tree say the palm is not ripe, but you who stand on the ground say it is ripe. Who is correct? There is a saying that when one sees the corpse of a dead man, tears would flow from his eyes. Have you not seen the love that the Holy Father has for people of all races? He loves everybody equally. Whatever he does or gives, he does not discriminate between the blacks and whites. He receives and treats the lawyers, doctors the same way he treats the poor or even the small child. But you segregate and practice class distinction. There is nothing which puzzles the whole world like the existence of brotherhood. If you tell the people of the world that the Holy Father in Brotherhood is not a member of any secret society, they will regard you as a foolish person, because they believe that the leader is the head of all the secret societies. The people always say that the leader is very powerful. I then ask, where is the power hiding? Is it under my robe, in the Holy Bible, hymn book? Where lies the power? When I hear this, I am always amused, because I have no altar, I do not speak in tongues. I am just an ordinary man. Can you tell me, if there is anybody, no matter his or her status, who comes before the Holy Father and will not prostrate and worship him? What do I use on them? Is it king, or done? It is nothing but love. In your own case, you boast of your high degrees, your educational qualification or your personality as chief. What I see in you is that you boast in chariots and asses. You boast that your parents are wealthy, your relations are in high institutions of learning. But who have ever boasted of having love? Love does not create division nor boast of anything carnal. This is the difference between the father and man. One of the attributes of God is simplicity of life. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 8. Charity suffereth long, and is kind, charity envieth not, charity bondeth not itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Have you noticed that this portion has projected the Holy Father, as a symbol of love, and on the other hand, has disqualified you? He is loving, peaceful, patient, humble, meek and merciful. He has all the virtues of God. He is God. It is written in the scriptures that prophecies, tongues and knowledge will all pass away but the love of God will abide forever. Why then do you not imbibe this love into your heart? Lack of love is the cause of the downfall of both whites and blacks. Love is that rejected stone which has become the chief cornerstone for all builders. If a person should ask you what should be done in order to bestow peace in Nigeria, tell him boldly that it is only through loving one another. Never search for peace in the universities, space, moon, sun or at any place. You will not find it in these places, except through obeying the instructions of God which is to love one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 19 to 21. 
for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Brethren, have you heard that? Have these words not fulfilled in you this last generation? Have you all not become experts in different fields? The word of God has said that there is no stone which will stay on top of the other that will not be rolled. The stone referred here to is not an ordinary stone but human beings. Now all the churches in the Christendom are in serious confusion. The Holy Father is now extracting his sheep from amongst the wolves. John chapter 2 verses 15 to 17. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep, and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered, that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Have you heard what is read to you, brethren? Now the desire of your hearts is the lust of the flesh, the love of material things of this world, money, children, wife, husband, wealth and all carnal things. This is why you lack the love of God which is a good gift. It is because you do not have the love of God that sickness, poverty, suffering, tribulations and afflictions come to mankind. Brethren, no matter the condition of your sickness, poverty, or afflictions, when you love one another, there will be no problem in your ways. This is the hidden power in brotherhood. Matthew chapter 5 verses 22 to 24. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and rememberest that thy brother hath all against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go by way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Brethren, have you heard that? If you have had the love of God in you, would you have said woe to your brother? Would you fornicate or adulterate yourself? Would you have said, this or that man is bad? Would you count sins on other people? Would you be angry with your brethren? Romans chapter 13 verses 8 to 10. Owe oh, no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. If the love of God is in you, would you see your brother to court and cause him to be imprisoned? If you had the love of God, you would not hate, kill or commit any sin against your brethren. Therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. That glory which God took away from Adam has now been restored to man. From the beginning, God made it a principle that all the angels in heaven and on earth should serve man. Therefore, do not doubt whatever you see, because all those things you have been reading from the Bible have now come to manifestation. All the things which you call mermaid, demon, witchcraft are not in existence. What really exist are the angels, of God, and are now in the kingdom of God. Right now, people are shouting, wailing, lamenting all over the world. These are mere introduction to the actual suffering to come. I am pleading with you to forsake all manners of sin, but you refuse. When the angels start their operation, all sinners will receive their due reward. Read Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 21 to see what will soon happen in the world. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when he streaketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. 
and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was, as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and, behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. The war of Armageddon is a spiritual warfare, and you will never see the fighters with your naked eyes. Therefore, it is incumbent upon every one of you to abstain from all appearances of evil, so that you may not be a victim. When the angels begin their operation, and you shout on leader, Oh, 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 do, I am not concerned, because I will not lead the battle. This is the time of judgment. If you practice righteousness, you will receive a righteous reward, but if you continue to sin, you receive the wages of sin. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. It was the will of God that angels should serve man, but when Adam fell from his glory, man lost that glorious position. After the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, man has been reinstated into that glorious position. Read Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 to 18. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, and wast, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. If it is because of your disobedience, you continue to sin, you will receive the punishment immediately, and if you do that which is good, you will also receive the reward at the same time. It is for these reasons that I plead with you to refrain from sin in order to receive a righteous reward and eternal life. It is the promise of God to give everlasting life to all those who fear and honor his name in this last generation. Read Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 to 5. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. If Adam had not disobeyed God, there would have been no death, poverty, sickness and the storms of life. 
The passage read out to you reveals that death shall be no more, human beings will have nothing to fear. God will wipe away all those things which make human beings unhappy. Brethren, that is what is going to happen in this generation, and some of you will be eyewitnesses to what I am telling you. In those days, people will look for death, sickness, pains, hunger and they will flee from them. Before you are sure of eternal life, you have to consider very seriously what is recorded in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. I will not take you further. My peace and blessings abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you Father.